a function capital F is called a primitive for F on an open interval I if it's derivative, if the derivative of capital F equals small f and this should hold for all x's in this open interval so capital F is a primitive for F on an open interval I if capital F prime in x equals fx for all x in I Yeah, for example, if we take fx equals x squared, then this function is a primitive for fx equals 2x. Since the derivative of capital F equals 2x. So f, capital F is called a primitive for f, and this holds for any open interval in R. And more specifically, we could also also take i equal to r. And so now you may question, how many primitives does a function have? Well, actually, if I know a primitive of a function, then I can easily construct other primitives. Like so, here we have g of x, capital G of x equals x squared plus 3, so we just add a constant to capital F, then this, of course, is also a primitive for F, since taking derivative of capital G gives 2x as a, der as a derivative, which equals fx. Well, this holds more in general, so if we have two functions, capital F and capital G, uh, which are both primitives for some function f on i, then I can show that these functions differ by a constant. So I can express f, capital F, as g of x plus c for some constant c in r. And this holds, this constant is fixed on the whole interval i. Well, a proof is quite elegant and it uses the mean value theorem and in order to show it we need to define a help function so let's define a help function h which is the difference between capital F and capital G then if we take a derivative so h prime of x then of course equals f prime x minus g prime x but since capital F and capital G are primitives of a function f, then we get f prime x minus g prime x equals fx minus fx equals zero. So we know that the derivative of some function equals zero on an open interval. So by virtue of the mean value theorem, we know that this function must be a constant on this interval. Yeah, so there must be a c such that h of x equals c for all x in i. Well, what does it mean? I'll just plug in the definition of capital H. Then we see that capital F equals capital G plus c for some constant c in r. And this holds for all x's in i.